uh, to the Allegheny Health Network nightly sports call. Josh Taylor and Gene Collier joining me in studio. We had an interesting conversation about kick returners over the uh, break here. We're answering a question uh, last segment about who would be the Steelers kick returner. We're looking up some numbers, and Gene, we found out Fitzgerald Toussaint and Sammy Coates actually led these led this team as far as guys who had at least a couple. Antonio Brown returned one last year, but as far as players who return, you know, at least four or five kick returns. Um, Fitzgerald Toussaint averaged 21.4 yards, and Sammy Coach averaged 25 yards per return on six opportunities. So I guess those are two guys that definitely are in it. Now Davis is a guy I looked up uh, during the break here. He actually has a couple of long returns for touchdowns, one for 108 yards in his rookie year and one for 99. So if, to answer that question, that's a couple of uh, just a handful of guys you look at as far as candidates for the kick returning position, assuming assuming Sammy Coach makes the team because that might be in doubt. So that's another com- that's another. Thing you look at. Let's go back to the phone lines. Donald and Grayston. Donald, you're on the nightly sports call. Yeah, I just wanted to bring up about the ends of talking about the running back situation with the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right. And I see Connor just being a good prospect. He's fighting for a job. Um, he seems level headed and all. We all know Bell's been in a little situation here and all and everything, but the money situation all. And the training camp, people getting hurt and all that. I just think Connor needs a chance. He should run for it. Well, appreciate the call. I don't think anybody's expecting him not to have a chance. I think James Connor will have a chance, assuming that, according to what Jerry Dulac reported, Gene, that the shoulder injury that he sustained is not serious. I imagine if it's not serious, at the first sign of him being ready to go, he'll be back out there and he'll get repetitions and he'll get a chance to maybe make a commitment, I should say, make a contribution to this team. Because I don't think he's a, a doubt to make it. I think he makes the team. It's just a matter of in what capacity in his rookie season. They're not gonna, it's rare that you know teams cut draft choices at all, let alone a third or fourth rounder. And a guy who signed a, a deal for, for that long. I mean, I, I just don't expect crazy. it. He's selling like crazy. Don't forget that. I, I think he'll have his chances, Donald. I, don't, I wouldn't worry about whether or not he's going to make this team. I think he'll have his chances. It comes down to A, what he does in training camp, B, if he's healthy to do it, and C, if anything happens with Le'Veon Bell. Those are going to be the main factors. And what factors. he can do on special teams. And what he can do on special teams. So th- those are going to be the controlling factors as to how much he plays. But I think he'll have every opportunity to do something with this team. Let's go to Mark in Uniontown. Mark, you're on the nightly sports call. Hey, thanks a lot for taking my call. Thanks really call appreciate in. it. Hey, uh, I was just curious if, if you, if you guys had heard about what the Buddings did to the Herald Standard in Uniontown, it bought the paper in, uh, it was in late June, and within three weeks they fired uh, half the people in the building, 35 people, a lot of people with a lot of experience and a lot of years at the paper. But I just think it just shows the greed and the, uh, ruthlessness of the Nuttings and anybody that expects them to spend enough money to bring a World Series to Pittsburgh is sadly mistaken. Well, first off, i got to go to a break here, so i got to let you go. I'll say two things. One, um, I did hear about that with the, uh, with the Herald Standard in Uniontown, and that was actually the place where I got my first job ever, working Good. in TV, worked in covering high school football for the Herald Standard. So I was very sad to hear that, and some really great people working there over the years. Here's the second thing I'll tell you. That's not as much of an indictment of the Nuttig family as it is as any other owner of a newspaper. But let's not kid ourselves here. This is something that we've seen a lot in the industry over the years. There, there's been, even here in this local market, we've seen it here. So it's not like it's a, a very rash thing that's just happening all of a sudden. It's a very unfortunate thing, having worked at two of the newspapers in this market. But it is an unfortunate situation. And Gene, you can speak to this better than anybody, that this is a shifting dynamic, that it's not just based on one person. But we've got to take a break here. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> 